What's up SolidWorks Wizards? Welcome back to our four-part series where we are building the Golden Snitch to celebrate the anniversary of the start of the Harry Potter world. We've completed adding the outer detail to the Snitch's body and we're now ready to begin building the wings. We're going to build the main wing spar using a sweep and the shape of the spar must follow a compound 3D curve. So we'll use a unique projected curve option to build the sweep path. Let's begin by creating a reference plane Unhide the sketch from our last revolve operation and select the point in the middle of the revolve center line. Navigate to Reference Geometry, Plane, to add a plane that travels through this point, and select the front plane as the second reference to make this new plane parallel to the front plane. Now sketching on this plane, let's use the Arc Sketch tool to draw in the front view sweep path shape for the wing spar, starting from the center point of the revolved sketch. And I'll just add a few dimensions and relations to fully constrain the sketch. Exit the sketch and now, sketching on the top plane, again use the arc tool to draw the top view shape. Again making sure the start point of the arc is snapped to the same point as our previous sketch. Once happy with the shape, exit the sketch and enter the Projected Curve tool under the Curves command. This time we want to use the Sketch on Sketch projection type, and select the two arcs we just sketched. As you'll see, we now have a complex 3D curve based on these two sketches. Now we can do a simple circular profile sweep along this path at 1.5 millimeters and make sure to uncheck the merge result option for now to keep this sweep as a separate body. Let's add a finishing touch to the tip of the wing spar using the dome tool found in the command manager. In the property manager, select the face you want to dome and we'll select the elliptical dome option to make the spar tip elliptical and tangent to the outer face of the wing spar. We'll make this dome four millimeters long. Now let's model our first wing feather starting with a sketch on the front plane where I'll sketch the shape of the feather for a simple extrude. Once happy with the shape, exit the sketch and navigate to the extruded boss tool where we will extrude the shape 1 mm on the midplane. Let's hide the main body for now and add a small 0.2 mm fillet to all of the feather's edges to soften it up a bit. Now from this view I just noticed I accidentally sketched this on the wrong plane when I intended to sketch on the reference plane we created at the beginning of this part of the series. This is an easy fix. In the history tree let's find the boss feature we just created and click the small triangle next to the feature to view the associated sketch. Right click on the sketch and select the edit sketch plane button to replace the front plane with the reference plane we created earlier. And now we have this extrusion right where we want it. We want the feathers to be slightly curved, so let's run through using the Flex tool to accomplish this. 
Before entering the flex tool, I'll need to create a reference coordinate system at the root of this feather. So let's unhide and edit the sketch for the feather extrusion and add a midpoint to the top line. Now navigate to Reference Geometry, Coordinate System, and select the point we just sketched to drop in a triad. Notice that the direction of our triad's axes defaults to match the main model coordinate system. In the Property Manager, you can reference any straight edge or sketch lines to align your X, Y, or Z axes to, but I'll leave it like this for now to see how this affects the output of our flex operation. So navigate to Insert, Features, Flex, and let's select our body to manipulate. In the Property Manager, you'll see the options to bend, twist, taper, or stretch a body. In this case, we want to bend this feather, so we'll keep bending selected, and let's select our newly created triad to bend around. But notice the trim planes in this flex operation default to fall along the z-axis. So let's click the red X to cancel this operation and go edit the direction of our reference coordinate system by right-clicking on that feature in the History tree and selecting Edit Feature. We want the z-axis of our reference coordinate system to travel down the length of this feather, so I'll choose one of these vertical sketches or part edges to align the z-axis to. Let's exit this feature, re-enter the Flex tool, and again select the triad we just edited. Now we're bending in the correct direction, and we can either enter an angle or radius dimension to adjust the amount of bend we'd like to apply. I'll just bend this body 30 degrees. Before we pattern this feather along the wing spar, I want to rotate the body in place just a little bit. Let's unhide the feathers sketch and in the command manager select the Move Copy Bodies tool. Select the feather and let's rotate it around this sketch point, negative 10 degrees. I'll make sure the copy option is not checked and hit the green check mark to complete the rotate operation. We're ready to pattern this along the projected curve we used to sweep our wing spar. Here we can use the curve driven pattern tool, but in order to pattern along a 3D curve like this, we need to be able to select a surface on which the curve lies. So let's create that surface first. To do that, we can just reuse one of our existing sketches that we used for the spar 3D curve. I'll select this sketch we created on the front view Navigate to the Surfaces tab in the Command Manager and select Extruded Surface. Here I'll create an extruded surface in two directions, just making sure the surface passes all the way through the spar. Now let's navigate to Curve Driven Pattern, found in the drop-down under Linear Pattern. And under Direction 1, select the spar's projected curve. In the box under Face Normal, we'll select the extruded surface we just created, and under the Bodies section, select the Feather Body. Let's pattern this with equal spacing 59 times, and we don't need the last few instances of this pattern, so let's use this Instances to Skip option, and select the last three instances to remove from this operation. And there we have our patterned feathers. The snitch is just about ready to fly, so stay tuned for the final part of our series where we will finalize the shape of the wing and wrap up the design of the golden snitch.